What's poppin' T-Subs and T-Squads? So before we talk about Mary backpedaling and the coochie poppin' in the handstand on the second part of the Salt Wives reunion, I have to give out a very, very, very special thank you and shout out to my homegirl, Heather Gay. Definitely shout out, shout out, shouts out goes to Heather Gay for not only following me on social media, but she also sent me a love, a, a, pe a, a little piece of a love offering, uh, which I greatly appreciate it. Completely unexpected. You did not have to do that, Heather. Um, and I greatly, 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 greatly appreciate you. And I thank you for it. I thought that was really sweet of you. Um, shouts out to you and many more blessings on you, your beautiful daughters, your business, your love life. Um, I'm here for you, daughter. I'm all here for all things Heather. Um, you know, Heather, y'all know rather, Heather and Whitney are my two favorite on the Salt Wives anyhow. So definitely, definitely, definitely shout out to you, Heather, for that. May God continue to uh, shine his blessings upon you and yours. And y'all, now that the pleasure trees are out the way, girl, let's get down to these salt wives because they gave us something to talk about. Here you go. <laughs> Dear God in heaven, y'all, <laughs> listen, I'm just now watching the damn salt wives. I had it. DVR, of course, and I'm just, I got up early this morning, 5.30 this morning, y'all, I was up, and I went on ahead and watched that, took notes, I still got to get y'all, um, growing up hip-hop, and then, um, Chasing Dallas, the retreat thing came out, I want to watch that and see what I can do about that, but one thing at a time, goddammit, um, the first thing we're going to talk about right now is the Salt Wives, child. Lord have mercy, Jesus. This is the second part of the reunion. Um, and girl, we about to talk about it because this part, Mary ass was in the hot seat. Lisa's ass was in the hot seat. Jen's ass stay in the damn hot seat. Um, you know, really not much there. But girl, we about to jump right on down into it. So girl, they decided to open up with Mother Mary and Mother Mary's shenanigans, her lies, her delusions, and every damn thing else that she's trying to mask it under the work of the good Lord. Um, so Mary stands by what she said about Jen smelling like a hospital, even though Jen says she was never at the hospital. Now, Jen, I'm confused because when she first said it and you went off on a tangent, you let it be known you just came from seeing your aunt who just had a double hip replacement or something like that. And I'm more than sure she had that at the hospital. So it went from you was just you just came from being up there with her to now you wasn't even at the hospital. So which one is it, Picasso face? Nevertheless, Mary, you was dead ass wrong for what you said and the people's is absolutely right. You running around here trying to wear the cloak of a first lady and you, for, well, listen, the gag is you act just like majority of them. Y'all, that's the real gag. For anybody that it, that isn't, is, isn't Africa Americas uh, or even if you ain't and you go to a black church more than likely, once, one or twice out of your life, when you go to different churches, you're going to find first ladies to act just as pretentious, booze toi and fucked up like Mary and Jezebel. You, you, you just are. So, um, all being true, and I believe every word of what people got to say about Mary. Um, it was still insensitive. It was messed up. But Jen, which one is it? Um... Jen talking about something, Mary's apology to her wasn't genuine. Well, you would know because you've been giving nothing but ungenuine apologies since this thing began. So you would be the person to know whether an apology is genuine or whether it's not. Now, what's sad is you want everybody else to accept your non-genuine ass apology. So why can't you do the same for Mary? This is my whole thing. You and Mary are two peas at the same pot. Maybe that's why y'all just can't get along. It can't be two banjee ass hoes on the same show together. One of y'all gotta go because y'all personalities is just too big. And and I hate I, I, if I have to pick. Yeah, Mary, you don't have to go. I, I much rather put up with with Jen and her unfinished Picasso face looking ass than have to deal with you making a mockery uh, uh, of the church house. Like I'm just not here for that. I'm not. I'm not. Um, so then Mary tries to clean up about what she meant by guys standing in front of the corner store out of fear. First of all, Mary, you full of shit. 
You live in Utah. You got four homes. And for you to be as pretentious as you are, Mary, nothing makes me think that you've ever been to a corner store since your ass been living in Utah. I just don't believe it. I don't buy it. I think I think there is a little bit of prejudice uh, towards your own people. And you made that even clear because you set up there and said up out of your mouth, I don't have a taste for black guys. But bitch, you married one. And your whole rationale is, well, he's light skinned. What the hell does that mean? That don't mean shit other than he black like this and not like this. That's the only thing. That's the only thing different about it. Whenever he decides to fill out applications for somewhere and they ask him what he identify with, his black ass is going to put Africa Americas. If the cops decide to stop his ass, uh-huh, they're going to look at him as an African American. They don't, they're they not going to be like, oh yeah, he black, but he a light-skinned black, so he don't count. Girl, where you get that from? And is that why you use so much pasty-ass makeup and or bleaching cream on your skin, Mary? I don't have a taste for black guys. Andy, but even Andy was like, okay, but your granddaddy black. So um, I'm, I'm just confused by what you mean by that. He likes skin. The f <sighs> so then they show tweets of um, getting Jen together when Jen says that, you know, uh, Mary has been saying a, a completely horrible and despicable things about her. And then Andy and, and, and Whitney and Heather and Twitter got Jen's ass together and saying, yeah, maybe she did, but it was in rebut to the same shit that you was doing. But I will say this. When it came down to that tight ass Christmas tree look, she won't lie. She won't lie. And y'all know I don't agree with Jen on nothing at all. But when she said that woman looked like a Christmas tree, I chuckled and I had to shake my head in the grins because Mary, you did. You looked like a tacky ass Christmas tree that had way too many damn ornaments on it. Girl, you looked like a leaning ass Christmas tree that had way too many damn ornaments on it. Like it, 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 it won't cute. It won't cute. It won't cute. It, it, it really wasn't. It won't cute. Um, but whatever. Uh, so Mary says that Meredith and Lisa never told them that they were scared of her. And then Lisa jumped in on Heather and Whitney about the situation. Lisa, I don't the fuck like you. And I do think it's a lot of merit into what Whitney and Heather had to say about you really not being as close as friends with Meredith. I mean, it's obvious. Because, it, and th th this is the thing. You didn't take up for Meredith half as much as you take enough for Jen when it comes to least I mean when it comes to Heather and Whitney talking about your best friend's marriage. My whole thing is the bitch that you caped for was the one who went to those two ladies about what went down or what she think is going on between Meredith and Seth. She did that. They wouldn't, they would not have known nothing if she hadn't told them. Then Lisa, you came out of your own mouth talking about how you ran down on, uh, your good Judy, your best, your best friends, the 10 plus years that you so, such good friends with. Even you went to Heather and, and, and said little things about her marriage or whatever the case may be. So girl, get out of here sitting up on this horse trying to grandstand and trying to act like, Oh, they're so wrong and they're so this and they're so that. Like, I'm sorry. I was with Heather when they came to that. You not that girl real friend. Because if you was, the same vitriol that you trying to put on Heather and Mary, on Heather and Whitney, you would be giving the Jen's ass. When the hell you started caping for Jen any damn way? Whitney, Heather, and Mary feel like Lisa is not Jen's real friend. I just talked about that because she's not. She's not. Um, I don't care how much she tries to get up here and cake for that bitch. She's not her real friend. She's not. At this point, she's not even Meredith. And at this point, I don't even believe that Meredith and, and, and Lisa are as good Judys as they say they are. Because my whole thing is, if I'm going through a marital problem, 
more than likely I will go to either one of my best friends with that quicker than I will go to my family members with it. You know what I'm saying? Like just the fact that she doesn't even think enough of the friendship to even trust you with what's going on. But see, then again, I guess it's a good thing she did it because you got cackling hoes running down and talking and, and, and spreading rumors or whatever about this woman's marriage anyway. So, I mean, maybe Meredith did herself a service. I don't know. Um, then Meredith tells the ladies that if any one of them talks about her marriage again or say something about her marriage again, uh, that she's no longer friends with them. And I just feel like, Meredith, you should have done that and set those boundaries a long damn time ago. Okay? Now, you getting up here now, and um, when we already know the damn truth, and now you want to warn everybody, I just feel like you a whole season too damn late. They done already done it. They done already done it. It's already been out. So, you know, whatever. Um... But see, if you're living in your truth to begin with, you wouldn't even have to worry about nobody spreading or, or talking about or, or telling other people the ins and outs or the inner workings of your marriage if you're just real with it from the very beginning. That's why I always say you better fix your own tea for somebody else fix it for you. And then they add all kind of ingredients in it when you only use two lumps of sugar and a swig of honey and a swig of Jack Daniels if you're nasty. Um, but we just gonna move on. Mary admits that there was no will. And I said, Mary, I didn't need you to admit that because we already knew that. Mary, come on. Who the fuck you think you playing with? Ain't no woman in day right mind going well off day, going well off all of their worldly inheritance, all of their damn businesses, all of their damn houses, all of their damn finances, and they man. To one granddaughter when she got other grandkids, other daughters, other chillings out there. It just had to be you. Then you sitting up there talking about something. Well, no, nah, she didn't put it in there. We prayed about it for a year or so. Or all of the rest of that stupid ass shit that was falling out of her debt. Like, see, Mary, this is why I just don't see it for you. Because, see, you playing with the good Lord. I play about a lot of things. But this type of treachery and nonsense and treason that she got going on with the work of the good Lord, I'm so surprised Mary has not spontaneously human combusted at this point. Child. Then she let the cat out the bat. Well, she didn't. Uh, her family members ran down on that hoe. And then Andy Messy ass brought up the fact of one of her damn family members saying that she was already married before she married her granddaddy. I mean, it, it's, it's like, Mary, I'm sorry. It's just too many damn fingers pointing in your direction. And I'm sorry. The, the fingers are just cold. They're clammy. They're, they're, they're slimy. They're nasty. They're steeped in, in, in very much so a lot of insecurity. Um, and it's shrouded in a lot of mystery. And it's also shrouded in a lot of controversy. Because I still feel like they need to take an inside look and a more deeper look into your grandmama's death. And yeah, I said it. Get mad with me. Um, so then they said that there was a recording of Mary calling her uh, congregation Poe and Stingy. Because apparently... Uh, the congregation didn't get her nothing for her birthday or Christmas or anniversary or whatever the hell it was. And then Mary said, she said that, but it wasn't in the vein of they didn't get her nothing. She tried to put it up on the back, which is what I've been saying from the very damn beginning as to why I'm not understanding why God has not smited, me, uh, uh, smited Mary yet. But then again, Mary lives a very lonely, miserable pathetic, insignificant, and insecure life. She does. That's why she bass and whores a lot of things because those things are representations of what she no longer has in her life that I'm more than sure that she probably wants, which is her family, real friends, 
a real life things of that sort. But Mary, you put yourself in that predicament, sis. You can't blame nobody else but yourself for that. You saw the millions. Now lay up with your millions and lay up with your grandfather like you continue to do. Don't get all up in your feelings now. Don't do that now. You got exactly what you wanted. But I'm going to tell you something. And I learned this from once upon a time from Rumpelstiltskin. Everything comes with the price, dearie. Everything comes with the price. So then Jen and Mary agreed to turn over a new leaf, which I think is all BS. It's contrived um, and I'm just not dealing um, I refuse to deal. So then they do a reel on my home girl Heather. Shout out to Rihanna. Where have you been? No, that ain't my favorite song for Rihanna. My favorite song for Rihanna is Skin. All I want is your skin. Yes, God, honey. That's off the Loud album. Uh, only the real freaks know that. Um, shout out to Heather. Heather deserves every damn thing that she's getting. Heather and Whitney, in my, in my opinion, are the two fan favorites. They're both my favorites. So I'm all here for all of the positive uh, positive things that Heather, as well as Whitney, I'm sure, it, are gaining from this show. Um, so Lisa recommended Heather for the show. So I'm completely confused and befuddled and betwixt about how you got up here and say that you didn't know her. Why would you recommend a bitch that you don't know? That's dumb. Like that, that that's that's dumb. That's dumb. And don't try to make it make sense because by you doing that, it's going to piss me off. <gasps> Excuse me. You trying to make sense of that to me, to me, that's equivalent to you playing on my intelligence. Quickest way to make me lose my temper. So don't do it, Lisa. Don't do it. Um, so then Heather and Whitney accuse Lisa of manipulating Jen um, I don't really think Lisa is manipulating Jen. I think that Jen got some shit on Lisa. That's what I believe. We all see how we see Jen for her works. Like we all saw how she tried to take Heather on this bald headed ass shopping excursion. All so that it's a way to get her to be on her side when it came down to the Whitney situation. See, once a bitch do something like that the first time, I believe them. And, and I listen, Lisa, I'm not even about to give Jen all of that. I don't even think that you're manipulating her, but I do feel like she got something on you because you've been spending all of your time getting up on this thing, trying to act like that your life and your marriage and your children and your household and your business and your walk in the Mormon faith is so perfect and so much better than everybody else's. I personally believe. Jen got real, real nigga dirt on you, your marriage, your business or something. And that's why you caping as hard as you are for Jen. And can't nobody tell me otherwise. So then Heather and Lisa start to argue through a break, baby. And let me tell you something. I was all here for, for uh, Heather giving Lisa ass the business all the way on up to the point where Lisa ass had to walk off crying like a distraught you know woman uh, going up the spiral staircase on up to her husband and then she trying to tell John what happened look, look girl John looked like he was trying to find the nearest exit because he didn't even want to have nothing to do with this shit in the first damn place like I'm just uh, Jen that bad Felicia fan girl get my fan back Get my fan back, Jen. Jen, don't you ever in your life get your pasty Betty Crocker inspired makeup palette wearing ass on this thing with no more of my fans. I don't want to see you with a bath Felicia fan. I don't want to see you with a bitch bath fan. I don't want to see you with a shade fan. And I got another shade fan that's red and white. I mean, red and black. I don't want to see you with neither one of those. Did y'all see that hoe come for me uh, in her dressing room with my damn fan? Girl, I know you lying. Um, but yeah, y'all, that was the episode. Won't that much to it. Like I said, this was nothing but Mary backpedaling the coochie popping in the handstand, atoning for all of her fuck shit. And um, this was Lisa's turn to now be in the hot seat 
for um, caping for Jen, and I still feel like there's an ulterior motive as to why she's caping for Jen as hard as she is. Myself, personally, I don't know it to be true. Ain't nobody send me nothing. I just honestly feel like Jen has some real serious dirt on Lisa, and because Lisa has made this persona about herself, that she's so perfect, and she's better than the rest, she don't want it to get out, so she's gonna cap for Jen. Because I'm more than sure, Jen was going to be the nini of this thing. Everybody was supposed to not be on Jen's side. Jen found a way to manipulate this shit to where she's found one person to be on her damn side. Listen, I ain't mad at a Jen. If, listen, whatever your secret is, Jen, drop down in my DMs and let me know it. Uh, but with that, y'all, that's all I got. I ain't got no more to give you. Y'all drop down in the comments. Let me know what y'all thought about the episode and or whatnot. Be on the lookout for Growing Up Hip Hop later on this afternoon that's coming out. Um, and also be on the lookout for Chasing Dallas, the retreat that might be out sometime tomorrow. And as well as Real Hot Boys Houston. I owe you. I owe y'all two reviews of that. So if I don't do it today, tomorrow going to be a catch up, catch up day. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. I ain't got no more to get you. And I'm gone. Bad. What you giving, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system. It's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business.